Just as it has always been, when our memories of the ancient world fade into twilight, a new era dawns to fill the void, an unfamiliar path with a pulse of its own, a tempo not dictated by the labor of men, but accelerated by the rhythm of machines, launching the world into an age of bold innovation. From this cauldron of steel and sweat, a vision of prosperity emerged. Harnessing the untold power of the elements, turning night into day. Creating new designs that brought the world stage to the masses. And providing an experience that many had never imagined. The advent of mechanized warfare brought devastation like none the world had ever seen providing a window of opportunity for some to dictate conformity as regimes spread their ideologies with their heavy hand, inciting the world to the brink of war. And yet, some chose a different path and through their vision brought unique perspectives to the world. A singular proponents of free thinking remained striving for peace in their endeavors to unlock the secrets of the universe. Some of which would fill our hearts with fear and regret. And as this progress unfolds, the finite nature of our world becomes clear. Our survival, the survival of all the world's peoples, depends on our ability to coexist in peace. But this peace is tenuous. Although mankind will always look onward, yearning for more, searching for new boundaries, only to break through them with the understanding that this world is one in which we all share, comes the responsibility of knowing that the decisions you make today will have a lasting impact on the generations of tomorrow. Hello everyone and welcome to my Let's Play of Sid Meier's Civilization 5 Beyond Earth. I've been wanting to do a strategy game on my channel for quite a long time, and although I did do a third stage Total War video, I didn't actually do a full Pokemon, not Pokemon, wow. Thinking ahead here, strategy game on my channel, I'm doing Pokemon Conquest on Skyloft Gaming, but it's not my channel, so we're gonna get right into it, playing with mods. Uh, just uh, some AI and balancing tools. Uh, nothing major. It's configurable ska. I probably misbutchered that pronunciation, but um, that is the way to say long live Poland in uh, Polish. Uh, it's all I know in Polish, except for. I used to know how to say thank you. It just slipped my mind. Uh, anyway, I actually did record this once, but the video was really choppy and you couldn't see the mouse cursor, so it made it very difficult. But, um, you're led by Casimir the Third, and you get a free social policy whenever you advance to the next era, which is a really cool, unique ability. Winged Hussars replace knights, and their special thing is they have a chance to force your opponent to retreat to the nearest empty square. So they're great for pushing people off of choke points. And the Decal Sable is really cool. You can build it really early, and it gives you increased production, food, and gold, I believe, off any deer, sheep, cattle, horse, and there's a fifth one, uh, resource, but that is really good. But anyway, also something I forgot to do, I forgot to name my civilization, we're gonna keep Casimir the Third, but we are not going to be the Polish Empire, oh no no, we are going to be the Pokemon Masters, Pokemon Master, can't fit Matt, oh, there we are. Pokemon Masters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't... Just don't question it. Casimir the Third loved Pokemon, okay? He, he definitely did. 
just gonna make the short name Masters, and the civilization uh, adjective would be Pokemon Masters, I guess. Boom! Casimir the third of the Pokemon Masters. Now, um, Pangea, typically you all start on one large landmass. That generally leads people to being more balanced. Uh, I generally like continents and archipelago type maps because it allow you to turtle a little bit. And I like to turtle, to be honest. I love turtling. It's, it's fun. Uh, small continents, few medium landmasses, and smaller islands. Uh, don't want to do a large map like that, so I'm going to do a continents map. It is my first LP uh, for Civ, so I'm going to make it relatively good. I'm going to do large standard game pace and a print difficulty. Print difficulty? I got to learn two speech good. Temperate, temperate. Uh, standard, I could go abundant or legendary start or whatever, but not going to. Um, anything here? Um, don't want to do random personalities. I like generally knowing what's going on. Quick movement, I'll eventually turn on. Human players only have a... That, that would be good if I was doing Babylon. Babylon is great for doing the One City Challenge, but I don't have Babylon. Uh, no, no, yep, none of this. So we're just going to choose random sieves, but one sieve I do want in here because um, they were historically... Um, two sieves, actually, who were both historical enemies of Poland would be um, technically not, not Bismarck's Germany. I do believe Bismarck ruled over the area that is Poland during his reign, but Poland was a different country by the time that the Nazis attacked them. They were their own separate thing. And I'll, again, I don't think, Ka I doubt Catherine uh, fought against Poland, but I do know uh, Russia did occupy Poland for a long time. And actually, I'm pretty sure it was until like night. I'm pretty sure it was the end of the First World War, Poland became its own country, and then it got invaded during the Second World War by Germany, so I definitely want both of those countries in there, because historical enemies, I can have a lot of fun with that. So we're just going to start our own game, we made it by uh, Patrick Stewart, which is, but I'm going to try my best. Oh, with the nation's economy in shambles and its people demoralized by the wars, influence, and security afforded only by way of your careful governance. Among your most noble achievements, the code of laws you established gave legal authority to many of the accept accepted customs of the time, strengthening the nation. Honored King Casimir, the people have long admired your steady hand of governance you wield. Can you return your kingdom and its subjects to golden age of prosperity? Will you conquer all those who oppose you or strive for peaceful relations? Can you build a civilization that will stand the tests of time? No, but I'll try anyway. Begin your journey! Ooh, we start on a river. Ooh, this is a good start. We got deer, two sources of wine, one for happiness, one for trading away. And gold, wheat, which can easily be turned in. Ah, why couldn't these be flipped? Wheat on a river is very good. The only bad thing is we've got tundra hills, which I hope there's iron in them, and then basically dead tundra, which is bad. But we got fish over here. Some. Eh, it's not too bad of a start. The only thing I can be relatively sure of is that there's no one to the south of me, and possibly no one to the southeast of me, which is. Okay, but I can't see any reason not to settle here. I mean, if this river extended one more, I might consider settling on the hill, because there, uh, I'd eventually lose out in this wheat, but... And no, 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 no. If we are the Pokemon Masters of the Pokemon Master Kingdom led by Casimir, we need a Pokemon Master name, Lumio City. I do believe that is the largest capital city in any of the Pokemon games, so we're going with that. Uh, I'm not going to really micromanage my tiles all too much, I'm not that good. And besides, we've only got one tile that gives two food, the rest are either one food, one production, blah blah blah. So yeah, we're going to want to um, build a farm on this wheat as soon as possible, and then get a mine on this gold, and then a plantation. Uh, I do want to choose for a science victory. Now, I think I'm going to go scout monument uh, before anything. Uh, no, I want to show this in the queue first. Yeah, scout, monument, shrine, worker, and then eventually a settler. I usually wind up buying a worker due to a, like a quest decision where it'll 
ask you, hey, barbarians are doing stuff, do you want to do stuff too? And I'll usually say, yeah, I'll do stuff. I'll take some of his workers. Uh, should I get the gold to connect, uh, mining to connect gold right away and reveal iron? That's usually a thing, but you can get caravans with animal husbandry. Did not mean to open the civilopedia. But there's no need for me to do anything with caravans right now. Uh, trade routes are much more, much better early on in Beyond Earth. Um, I usually wind up going granary to get, um, pottery to get the granary, and then eventually, I you try to rush the great library, but since it doesn't give you a free scientist, it just gives you a free tech, it's not quite as good. If I was playing Babylon, I would s just beeline writing, but, uh, what I'm thinking is I'm gonna go mining, and then if I find myself with a aggressive sieve as my nearest neighbor, I'll, I will go bronze working right away. Because the smith is a great thing to get additional production, trade reduction to cities. But I'm probably going to go mining, pottery, writing calendar. That way I'll be able to connect the uh, the wine right away. And hopefully I can get a, probably a tundra parthenon. Because there's a ton of tundra here. If I can get faith from these tiles, it wouldn't be quite so useless. It'd almost be like building the Petra on desert. Alright, now... There's forest that way, so it's going to be more efficient for me to explore in this direction. I'll probably wind up moving to this hill next to uncover as much of the map as possible. Oh! Timer! Phone's upstairs! Alright, just going to go by ear. And by ear, I mean hope for the best. Boom. Ooh, there's bison up here. That's a unique resource. It's got... That's... It's basically cattle. That's not bad. A, s mm, a city right here wouldn't be too bad. Uh, it would have a little bit of overlap with Lumios, but it would it would get the bison, more wine, and fish. And fish up here, too. So that's actually not a bad city location right there. And it's on the coast, which is amazing. I love coastal cities. I really do. So yeah, a city right here would probably be good. It wouldn't eventually be able to work this, but it looks like we started our own little... It looks like we either started on our own little subcontinent, or we're just on the far western range of one continent. The reason I want to scout is so I can just, you know, send him down this way. But now I'm looking at it, it looks like I might need to bring my warrior back, because we might have neighbors in this direction. Which means no goody huts. Yeah, if I can't get myself any goody huts, I'm going to be annoyed. Especially since I'm running around with a freaking Pokemon Master Warrior here. Ah! Now, please don't get popped in the next two turns by another sieve. I will I will be irate. I will be a dino. I will be the irate Pokemon. I do a lot of Pokemon on my channel. If you're new to my channel and you're just watching the sieve, I do a ton of Pokemon on my channel. So, I will be making Pokemon jokes. 125 gold? That's kind of bleh. I could buy the scout now, but instead I'm going to buy the monument. I don't know if it's Brave New World or the mod I'm using, but you don't get monuments from uh, tradition. You get science, which I actually prefer, but it makes um, skipping the monument a lot, e a lot harder. I'm going to grab this with my warrior and then send my scout over this way. Ah, nice. Culture pop. I love culture. Send you in this direction. Yeah, I'm probably just going to send him around this way. Keep my warrior around the city in case of barbarians. And my city's grown. We get mining. We've already popped the gold. Alright, six turns to shrine. I do want to get that done. Um, I don't really think there's a need for a second scout yet. Really, there's not much up here. It looks like that's going to be coastline. So I'm mainly going to skin, skinned, send the scout that way. Alright, so um, I said I was going to go pottery into writing into calendar next. We have yet to see the next sieve. Okay, I'm thinking liberty. Um, tradition's usually good because you get additional culture in the capital. And three additional culture per turn. That's actually quite helpful. Um, you get the Banner Rice Terraces, and this is what uh, replaces monuments as mentors. You get science per turn and increased science from science buildings. I'm going to want that, 
So I'm probably going to wind up at least putting two into tradition eventually and then going into uh, knowledge. Uh, monarchy, citizens in the capital create one gold and 0.5 happiness. That's pretty cool. It'll, it really makes you focus on getting a big ass capital. Because if you got 10 people, that's 5 happiness and 10 gold. Uh, 25 um, surplus food per city. That's food carried over when a new citizen is born. 2 plus food per city. And one food per four population in the capital. Again, focusing on a big capital. Oligarchy is great if you want to just not pay maintenance for units and increases the city attack. Aristocracy is good for creating wonders, but uh, getting additional production and culture in all cities and eventually getting a free uh, worker and a free settler is really good. Republic is great. Um, in your first... Um, in all the cities that you own, you get whatever the highest tech is for your uh, defense buildings. If your highest tech for defense buildings is castle, every single one of your cities will get a free castle with this. It's really good. You get national happiness per con uh, connected city to your capital. So if you've got 10 cities and they're all connected to your capital, that's 10 happiness. And you get a less unhappiness for cities that are not occupied. So that's cool. So yeah, I think I'm going to go liberty to start. Because I want to expand a little quickly. Fortunately, happiness will be an issue. Ooh, we've got six iron down here. It cannot be worked by the city, though, so I'd either have to wait for the borders to manually stretch down here, or I'd have to plop a city down there. <sighs> Same thing with that. One, two, three. Just out of reach, but it's only two iron, so it's not quite as important. Alright, so bring you over this way. You need to go in that direction anyway, so... You pop that. Yay, we met Malacca. Unfortunately, we are not the first Sif to find them, so someone's over this way. But we will be able to get a trade route with them, so I'll pledge to protect them for now. And, um... Yep. Just continue onward. Really wish I knew how long I had been recording for, but, you know. I'll just go by until I get bored. Oh! Barbarians! Yay! Yay! You know, I really hope they get a uh, quest for me to kill barbarians or to destroy the barbarian encampment. Because that would be useful. Someone founded a Parthenon. Culture from plantations. Well, it looks like I won't be getting that. That would be great, too, since I would undoubtedly get quite a few plantations. Oh, well. Alright, I'm going to move you here. Because if I don't take out that barbarian encampment now, it's just going to keep spawning units and they're going to keep pushing onto my borders. Uh, one thing that I believe the mon one of my mods adds is that uh, city-states um, warriors will explore around looking for other civs. Alright, let's just have you do one of those. If they want to go after my scout, that's fine. Draw them away from their encampment. Yay, we met Sophia. They're militaristic. They have furs. Let's go ahead and pledge to protect them just to get on their good side. They do have a quest. Oh, barbarians invading their territory. Do they have a quest? They do not. They apparently do not give a crap about the barbarians right next to them. Hmm. I do not want to leave the comfort of these forests, so I'm just going to leave him there. He'll get double teamed, but he'll be in the forest. He'll wind up getting promoted this next turn, which means he'll instantly heal. You know, you figure these city states have, like, would, they would help me a little bit? But no. I wonder if they get a bonus attacking from the hill. I don't think they do. Yeah, de defending is much more efficient than attacking. And I'll give you rough terrain since there's quite a few forests in the general area. I can, I'm also going to name them, so I'm going to name our first warrior. Ace Trainer. Bart. Oh, I can't do it. Well, I, I guess I'll just have to skip on the title of the trainer in order to fit a name in there. It's going to name you Trainer Bart. Boom. I'm going to go ahead and uh, let you heal up. Sneak you back there. Oh, they've got access to quite a few iron. Lucky them. Lucky them. And we are going to start generating our own culture now. 
after this. Yes, at attack my entrenched warrior who now has a bonus in rough terrain. Hmm, I might be able to take out the encampment this turn. I doubt it, though. Decisive victory, bonus for... Yeah, okay, definitely. Those barbar... I don't... Oh, a barbar reunion. I don't believe those barbarians would be able to take out my warrior. Besides, he's in rough terrain, again, where he gets a bonus, so... Now, these guys don't have a place to scurry back off to, so they'll just roam around for a while. I'll heal you up for a turn. And... They've got more iron here, so... If I wanted additional iron, I could just really get in with, good with Malaka. I'm probably going to wind up trading with them a lot. Oh, I'm Please next to Catherine. To Fantastic. She, she scouted all this up here. Fantas so she's either up here or over here. Great. I'm on the same continent as one of my mortal enemies. Fun! No turtling for me! I've played against Catherine quite a few times before. And she pretty much always will declare war on you if she detects your military is even slightly weak. So, yep, Catherine is going to be a problem. The worst part, it, um, I know this mod rebalances it. I, I don't know if she gets her unique ability of getting double strategic resources off iron, horses, and uranium. That would really suck if she did, though. Pottery? We got pottery! Amphibious? No. Cover? No. Siege? That could be useful, actually. Oh, Russia's got a couple scouts kicking around. Oh, what's that? Fountain of Youth. Surrounded by deserts and mountain. So I wouldn't be able to use it if I wanted to. Alright, I'm seriously considering plopping my next city over here. It had good it would have good production and once improved with some fishing boats and some farms. Good enough food. And it's not too far away from the capital, so running a road there wouldn't be difficult at all. Hello, Mar Barbarians. And hello, Russia. Don't declare war on me, you hear? I do not like when people declare war on my... Oh, I could probably just buy my worker now. I believe they cost 350 I know I've already been producing one for a few. Oh, great. She recruited barbarians, probably as warriors. Fantastic. Yeah, I can buy the worker now. I will change the production immediately. To a... Granary. And purchase the worker. Boom! A unit needs orders. You will go up here. Hmm, this wouldn't be a bad spot for a city if it weren't for all these desert tiles. Petra could be good here. I'm, I love how when I'm playing this game, I can act like I know what I'm talking about because I've seen other people play it. Lumio City can fire on an enemy. Destroy the barbarians! Death to the heathens. Uh, yes. Connect the gold. I'm gonna need that happiness to start a new city. You know, it would be rather Polish of me to uh, adopt uh, Catholicism as a religion, so I should probably shoot for being slightly religious as well. Although... I'm thinking about that. I probably shouldn't have gone liberty if I want to be religious. Uh, let's see. Can I see my social policies? Yeah, I believe it's piety that's religion. Yeah, starting this gives you two faith and four happiness and locks Stonehenge. Golden Age for ten turns and requires less national happiness. That's really good. Tolerance... Uh, one plus happiness per religion. Building cities with multiple religions also get Parthenon bonus to the second most popular religion. Heh. <laughs> Increase uh, faith from shrines and temples, and faith costs are 33% per less. That's really good. Gold from temples, shrines, and holy sites is amazing. And you get a free great profit at the end of that, so that's pretty cool. Patronage is for city-states. Aesthetics is, I believe, culture. Yep. Culture... 
great artists and culture. Yeah, that's all culture. Not my thing. And then there's the ideologies, which we have yet to get. Unit needs orders. You need orders. I found out where Sophia is, guys. We don't need to worry about that is. We, we don't need to worry about that is. I are English good. I, I are English good. You know what the worst part about me announcing this series beforehand, though, was? One of the things I was going to say about Poland has already been said. And, holy crap, people are more literate than me? That's not good. But I was going to say, can Poland into space? And I can't say that now because that's been taken by Shen Place. Uh, you can pay 100 tiles to get 3... Uh, pay 100 gold for 3 tiles. Pay 100 gold for a worker, which is a bargain, or just get one free new tile. I would rather get the free worker, to be honest. And I will spend the money on that, because I'm getting a free worker for a third of the cost. Alright, now a unit needs orders. Uh, you're going to fortify there. And, which didn't you knew it, you can do things this turn. Build a farm on that wheat. And before you know it, Lumio City will be all good. And besides, I'm about to get my next city soon. Made up policy. Collective rule. Production towards settlers and a free settler. A new city might... I don't think it would put me into unhappiness right away. Plus, I am... Four turns away from connecting the gold. How many turns would it take for me to get up there? At least four, so... I will... I will obviously escort him. And I will bring you along... Oh, God! Well, good thing the Barbarian Camp is not right here. I don't know... I don't think Bison is a luxury resource. No, it's not. Writing in six turns. God, I need to get a library, like, everywhere. If there are people with already five techs, then either they're going after the early stuff, or they're just, you know... Oh, God, if Korea's in the game, I might not win a science victory. If Babylon's in the game, I might not get a science victory. Trainer Bart, you will defend our settler to the death. It looks like I'm going to get my first city before turn 45. That's pretty good. I don't know if that's a good timetable or not. Oh, please, Russia, don't be trying to cut me off. I will declare war on you with my one warrior. Oh, no. Why? A barbarian encampment? Literally the area I want to settle. Oh, please, Barbarians, attack that scout. Please, Barbarians, attack that No, you're not... Why did you not attack that scout? You're an idiot. I, I think I'd get a flanking bonus if he was here. Yep. Uh, flanking bonus, bonus for fortified units, terrain modifiers. Yeah, that would do well. I'm gonna have my scout there. That way, Russia just can't cherry-pick that Barbarian encampment for free money. Cherry pick is a hockey term, by the way. It's basically what happens when one offensive player is at the is near the opponent's zone when the rest of his team is defending, waiting for a breakaway pass. It's scummy, but people do it. Ah, Russia, did you think better of it? Have you wait? I have to have you fortify. And I would much rather my scout take damage, so I'm going to attack with my scout. Weaken them so that they can't attack my attack and kill my warrior in one. And hopefully they'll go after my scout. Alright, the gold is connected. I'm going to put a mine on that tundra. Two turns until writing. Five turns until granary here. Uh, someone is playing uh, Counter-Strike. I need to set myself to offline. Did not mean to open my profile. Busy. Boom. My scout is leveled. Oh, fantastic. They spawned a unit. Uh, give you... Sight? 
I'm gonna keep you there. I don't believe that warrior can move anywhere, actually. They'd have to swap with the other warrior in the encampment, and that would waste their movement. Alright, so we got the farm built. We're gonna get that built. I don't have calendar yet, and I don't have archery yet, so I'm gonna just have to go over here and build a farm. The annoying thing about uh, doing this is I'm now stuck on the, the swirling globe, so I might need to save it and exit and then re-enter the game just to get rid of it. Uh, settler, you wait. Please attack my scout. Well, it doesn't matter, my warrior's getting ready to kill you now. Unless they swap, in which case... Oh, no, he just ran right through. Nice, we got writing. Jeez, calendar's gonna take for forever. You know what, I'm just gonna go animal husbandry. I don't mind waiting on the new luxury resource. Warrior. Destroy. Go, trainer Bart. Use... Stone Club. It was super effective. Free money! I'm doing this to make sure that they don't attack my... If they attack one of these guys, that they're not going to attack the warrior. They're going to attack the weaker one. Build me a mine. I need additional production in this. Uh, let's get, this is going to be great once I get the mint going. I love it. Uh, I switched to production. That does shave a turn off, but that puts me in stagnation. So there's no point in that. I will get my city this next turn. And uh, I'm going to quickly stop the recording just to see what time I'm at. Alright, I'm at around 28 minutes, which means I'm actually at around 31 minutes because of the intro video. So I can definitely keep going. I want to get my first city going. I want caravans to send to my first city. Oh, please no. Please no. Please no. Oh, hanging on. Uh, yep, build that mine. Unit needs orders. Found this city and save us. Uh, you're not founding the city of Warsaw. No, I'm sorry. You're going to fortify until you're healed. And we are going to change you... Uh, to uh, what I believe is the second biggest city in the Pokemon games, which is Goldenrod City. Hablamy! Fortunately, three of the first tiles I wanted to use are blockaded, apparently. And here, you want a monument. Uh, I'll purchase a shrine here. Because I want to get on that. Yeah, at this rate, it would, it's going to take me like four more turns-ish to get my Parthenon. Show in queue. I want my monument, granary, and the library. Alright, now I want to add to queue here. I don't want to do great, great, bright, 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 bright. I can never say that. Because I don't have the production for it right now. All right, now I'm just going to move these guys off to a safe area. Because I believe this guy would have to move all the way over here and end his movement to get in range of me. So, Man, Trainer Bart, just he just does not want to die. Goldenrod City can fire on an enemy. And I can probably go up. Oh, no, he's dead. I was going to say I could venture out there with Bart and take him down. Alright, I'm just going to bring my scout back here and scope out my third city, which honestly, it's probably going to have to be inland because this tundra would have no production but have a ton of food. It would also get access to gems, food, fish. If I plop it down right here, it would get the deer right away, one of the fish, actually both of the fish right away. It would also get the stone right away. And within maybe six turns, it would also get the deer, the gems, the other stone. It wouldn't be a bad spot. It just would have no production. And that's the big part. The stone wouldn't give it nearly enough production. Because I could put a quarry there and stone works, but that's just not enough. Honestly, I'm thinking over here somewhere. Two sources of cattle with the Tikal stables and more gold. Only problem is Sophia is right there. 
And I don't know where Catherine went. She's probably on the other side of these mountains. Which makes this uh, city somewhere along here, along this river, good to stop her. Because she's probably coming in through here. And I could probably just funnel her forces in there relatively easily. North of Sophia. Public declaration protecting Sophia. So they're either north of Sophia or they're over here. Land grab again. I'm just going to do that. Because I don't have the money to do anything else there. Uh, you're still um, recovering. You move here and recover because you need it. And then I'm going to send you to rescout stuffs. Because I don't see a great second city look. Damn it, another Parthenon. Every time I get close to a Parthenon. Now I got to wait another two turns. Lumio City has grown. Library in that many turns. I can shave that a lot. And I will. Can I purchase caravans? You know, I can't. Honestly, I'm thinking of sending my first caravan to Malacca simply for money because I need it. I have no trade routes available. I'm getting a social policy in three turns and a Parthon and hopefully two. And I do think I will be getting the Parthenon that gives you... I will be getting the Parthenon that lets you get additional faith from desert tiles. I'm sorry, um, Trainer Bart, but your respite is short-lived. You're going to have to get over here. So is your, your respite. It's also short-lived. Alright. Uh, bring you over here. Yeah, after this, uh, when he finishes the mine, he's not going to have work. He's going to have to walk all the way to Goldenrod City. It well, probably wouldn't be too bad, though. I could probably walk him over to this bit of farm, and he can just continue the work on it. Save some movement points. Animal husbandry, and we got our Parthenon, and I am probably going for either archery or trade. Or the, yeah, the wheel, definitely. Because this guy's on a river. Why is it still telling me to build a mine here? There's a mine here. I have enough ink to purchase a part of my power. Uh, do do do. Banana citrus, no. Palace, no. Production toward wonders, no. Culture from shrines, no. Faith from quarries. That really would only be good over there. Culture from jungles. Culture and faith from isles. Culture from fishing boats, desert tiles. Two faith from open tundra. There's a lot of open tundra here. Like one, two, three, four. It would also make settling a city over here a very heavy faith-based city. Because of all of this open tundra. It doesn't count tundra with like uh, trees, just regular tundra. It's like a city right here would get both stones that this city would not get. It would also get the sheep that that city would not get. This is a perfect third city spot. It would just have no production. So, yeah, I think I'm just going to do um, Dance of the Aurora. Faith from... Dun See? Right there. If this was just a plain Tundra tile. Now it's got Faith attached to it. And I believe I'm working that tile. Yes, I am, which means I'm getting more Faith per turn now. Three from Cities. So, like, if I were to purchase this tile, you would be able to see the additional Faith it, ga it gives. Gaves? Moving over here, just to see if these guys are spawning anyone. These guys spawned with a promotion? Woodsman, faster in forest and jungle. Fantastic. Alright, you're done with that. So, you're going to move over here to get ready to take over for this guy's farm. And then that guy's going to hightail it. Oh, nice. I did not realize there were horses here. That's one reason you should get animal husbandry. Oh, wow. Right here. And this one could be worked by that city. And both of these are uh, get the benefit with the Decal Stables. That's just out of the way. And that's just out of the way. Oh, nice. We got another policy. Alright, you. are going to move over here. You are going to finish that f right there. Oh, nice. I think... With this, I'm going, since it's got two good food, food tiles, I'm just going to build a mine right away. 
and uh, my policy 